This time I'm going to ask uh, Karen to sing if she'd come back one more time. Bless us in the song. We'll go into the word and we're going to get on that. You may give God some praise for me. It's the Lord's, it's the Lord's, it's the Lord's, it's the Lord's. My God. <laughs> Everybody ought to hold to his hand. Come on, y'all. God's on the changing hand. You better hold to his hand. Yeah.
First thing that came to mind, I'm going, oh gee, what in the world is an OG? And 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 so the first thing that came to my mind was it was an old guy. And I ain't old. I ain't trying to be old. But then I, I so I had to really and truly go to Google it to find out. Y'all know y'all did the same thing. To find out what OG was, and it's a slang term. It originated from the 70s uh, and is used to describe someone who is exceptional, authentic, and old school. He's an original, an originator, a person who is highly respected. And you want to know something? I got used to being an old G. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I, I kind of wear it with, with, with pride now because I, I, I know what it means and I remember a man hanging around Antioch Baptist Church at 131 Florida Street and then over there at 1327 Fillmore Avenue and we were growing when we were growing up you know not like it is today you know uh, the gangs they wasn't out there you know killing people they just opened up a can of whoop tail. Come on, talk back to me. Yeah, uh -huh. we weren't fighting with guns and knives. You know, we just knock you out. Yeah, y'all remember some of the gangs, like the Mad Dogs, 
yeah, the matadors, uh -huh. yeah, the pythons. Uh, I got a witness in here somewhere. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, uh, you know, to, to, to go back to the 70s, you know, uh, uh, we, 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 we don't know nothing about uh, all of this stuff y'all be doing on Facebook. You know, we had to go outside. Amen. If you wanted social media, you needed to socialize outside. You know, back back in the seventies. Come on now, we, Amen. Uh, we we wouldn't wear weave, especially men. No, we wouldn't go wear no weave in. Our, but we will get a Jerry girl. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, we will. That's why some of us bald now. <laughs> And there's so, many, there's so many questions that bombard our lives as it relates to our lives. And, and in fact, some of us are still searching, even after 30, 40, 50 years, uh, to find out really what is our purpose and our destiny. And, you know, during difficult times, we seek to find out, you know, why in the world are we here? But one of the most difficult times that uh, one could ever go through is that introspection. You just ask this, dumb, this, this, this serious question, why are we living? Because it's interesting that you can live 80 and 90 years and nobody knew you was here. Uh, and, and I think part of the problem is that we spend so much time trying to be like everybody else that we forget that we're uniquely and wonderfully made. Uh, and can't nobody duplicate you. You are one of a kind. And I think it's the uh, hardest to answer uh, life's question when we find ourselves dealing with things that, that, that we have nothing to do with. Uh, how often have we looked at the pattern of our lives and discovered that so much went on in our life that we actually had nothing to do with it. We had nothing to do with the family we was born in. We had nothing to do with the mama or the daddy you had. We had nothing to do with your brothers and your sisters that some of you like and some of you don't like. If y'all can talk back to me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You had nothing to do uh -huh, with your uncles or your aunties. You had, had nothing to do with your gifts and your talents. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You had nothing to do with your sickness in your body. You had, no, you had, you had it was all out of your control. And yet, we still have to navigate through these things and walk through this life. And we cannot allow things that we don't have control over to cause us to abort who we are. We have to come into, because uh, uh, we came into families with no control. And, and matter of fact, uh, we've dealt with prejudice. We, we, we've dealt uh, with just mean people. Uh huh. We, we've met with, uh, dealt with uh, uh, poverty and failures, and, 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 and that's coupled with uh, being fired for no reason, abandoned for no reason, betrayed with no reason, hated for no reason, folks starting fights with you for no reason, gossiping about you for no reason, lying on you for no reason, stopping, speaking to you for no reason. I might as well go all the way. You, 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 you wake up one morning and after years of partnership, Mr. and Mrs. Dunpatrick, packed their bags, left you with the mortgage, the car note, the kids, and the dog for no reason. And have you ever been in a situation where you're just flowing, but you ain't going nowhere? Uh, the wind's just blowing wherever they, it chooses. And many of us honestly have had a destiny that we had no choice in the matter. And sadly, so many things have happened in our lives that we have covered and tried to hide over, but I come to encourage you, don't be ashamed of your past. Uh, for you are chosen in God before the foundation of the world. For too long, what we do is we seek to cover our background to compensate for it, and sometimes we try to consciously deny it and do just about anything to avoid facing directly the aspect of who we really are. Uh, we want to give the impression that, you know, some of y'all in here just that y'all have been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost all your lives. The devil is a liar. I just came to bust your bubble this morning. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Look at your neighbor and tell them that includes you. We try to give the impression 
that God cannot use anything negative. And the sad part about it, that's all we bring to the table. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, never let anybody devalue your experience. From Take it from an old G. Let, never let anybody disqualify you because of the things that you've been through or the things that you've done. The reason why is because when God made you, he broke the mold. He knew what he made. He knew what you was going to do. And he knew he was going to get you out. <laughs> sometimes, 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 sometimes you, you just got to embrace your strengths as well as your weaknesses. And here in our text, we meet a dysfunctional family. Jacob finds a young man, uh, guy by the name of Laban, who is his mother's uh, brother, which of course is also his uncle. And Jacob agrees to work seven years for Laban in exchange for the hand of his youngest daughter, Rachel. Yet on the wedding day, Mother Johnson, watch what happened. Laban switches daughters. And instead of the pretty one, he got the ugly one. Y'all not talking back to me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and some of us have been in that situation where you thought you were getting one thing and got the total opposite. Uh-huh. You had just got finished praising God for that new used car, and you go to start it the next day, and you found out you bought a lemon. Uh, you were all excited about the new job, thinking you got to step up, only to find out you got to work three jobs for one paycheck. Uh-huh, I might as well go all the way. Ma'am, you thought you met the man of your dreams, only to find out three months later, you hooked up with Ned the wino. Cletus the crackhead. And yeah, and June June the junkie. Fellas, y'all need to help me here. Uh-huh, because we all been there. When we was drunk, she looked like Halle Berry. When we opened up our eyes the next morning, she looked like Whoopi Goldberg. Y'all not talking back to me in here. Jacob, 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 Jacob loves Rachel. And he didn't care too much for Leah. And since the old man stuck Leah on Jacob, he gets into another seven year agreement to marry Rachel. Yeah, advice number one from an OG, don't settle for what you got, work a little bit harder to get what you want. Jacob had no control over Laban's fraud, but what Jacob had control of was his destiny. And some of us settle for second best. I mean, you're wasting your time and their time on something or someone you know you don't want, and deep down inside, you know it ain't gonna work. Stressing yourself out for folks that you can never please, loving folks, that don't even have the capacity to love you the way you want to be loved, uh -huh. and, and bringing all your resources to the table and they broke. Y'all not talking back to me here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. For, for as the story is told, Leah and Rach, Rachel get into a struggle for Jacob's love and attention. And it got so bad, Jennifer, that these two wives gave their maids to Jacob for wives as well, resulting in a domestic disaster of 12 sons and four women. Y'all didn't get that, did y'all? Jacob got four baby mamas. Y'all not talking back to me here. Don't, don't act like y'all ain't got four baby mamas. I'll tell it, I got four baby mamas, now what? <laughs> ladies, 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 ladies. You may not be able to control him, but you can control you. Amen. Uh -huh. Take it from an old G. You already know he been cheating. Uh, yeah, but you'd rather fight the other woman than have self-respect and pack your bags and your babies and move on. Uh huh. Uh, he been disrespecting you, devaluing you, diminishing your self-esteem, 
and you'd rather punch your tires and break out windows, and neither the tires nor the windows did anything to you, uh -huh, and then go home and make another baby with him. Take it, take it, take it from an OG. Come on, sis, put your big girl drawers on. Make a choice to take control of your life. You got to get like Popeye. This is all I can stand. I can't stand no more. Reach into your bosom, pull out your Holy Ghost spinach, and tell Boo Boo the fool, uh, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And, 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 and in this house, we got four women that he going with, and children by each of these women. Now this problem, this is a problem because I can't, I, can't, I can't wrap my mind around being in the house with one woman, let alone four. Y'all not talking back to me here. Yeah, yeah, you got four women vying for his affection, 12 boys vying for his attention, envy and jealousy between the two wives, let alone you got this greedy father-in-law on top of it, and with all this turmoil, now I can understand how the boys are feeling. Because Jacob's sons were, were some serious cutthroat rough dudes, like some of y'all in here. Uh, I'm afraid of y'all, so I'm going to hurry up and get up out of here. Yeah, uh, can you imagine the tension and the disruption that is happening in this household? Uh, the mothers don't like each other, the children don't like each other, you can't trust the in-laws. I mean, this is a hot mess. And Joseph is one of two sons, uh -huh. and Jacob was the best love because of this relationship. Here's another point here. Everybody is not going to make you happy about the favor on your life. Uh -huh. uh, matter, matter of fact, they're not going to like your dreams, they're not going to like your gifts, they're not going to like your vision. So what? Mm -hmm. Can I tell you a secret? That's not your problem, that's theirs. Yeah, yeah. You can't control the dreams that God gives you. You can't control the fact that you got a coat of many colors. You can't control that God has given you a vision for a brighter future. All I can control is that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it in the heart. But I know this much: God got something for me. Does anybody in here know that God's got something for me? I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Another piece of advice from an old G. If you fall off a ladder, you can't get to the top until you get up. Look at your neighbor and tell them, get up. After 43 years of preaching, I've learned this. Most of the people who do all the negative talking about you got scared because they fell off and never got up. There's another thing I've learned is that the only way a person can pull you down is if they're beneath you. Oh, help me, holy God. I felt that in my sanctified tone. See, 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 see. You got to stop giving attention to folk that are beneath you. Beneath your anointing. Beneath your integrity. Beneath your faithfulness. Uh, when they are throwing dirt, just be like that old mule. Just shake it off and pack it up under your feet. And get where you got to go. Uh, Joseph arrives in Egypt as a slave but soon becomes the most trusted servant of his master. Uh, Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his entire estate. And while he's working, all of a sudden, this woman come and warn him, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Here he is, a 17-year-old boy being seduced by a voluptuous older woman. He couldn't control her desires. He couldn't control her advances. But one thing Joseph could control, and that's himself. Can I give y'all a little uh, help y'all young fellas real quick? Uh, take this one from an old G. Just because she lifts her skirt up doesn't mean you have to pull your pants down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take it from an old G. Everything that looks good may not be good to you or for you. Uh -huh. uh, some people in here say, hey, Pastor, why you you still single after 14 years? I'm going to tell you why. Because I'd rather have P-E-A-C-E -E than a P-I-E-C-E. -E. My brother over there in the corner, he felt that in his sanctified toe. Uh -huh. uh, Potiphar's wife tried to give little Joseph a P-I-E-C-E. -E. 
But, but down in Joseph's spirit, God said, uh, my P-E-A-C-E, -E, I leave with you. Yeah, Y'all know the story. That cougar ripped off Joseph's clothes. And while he stood there butt naked, he looked the dead in the eye and said, you can't touch this. Uh -huh, uh huh. You can't touch my body. You can't touch my integrity. You can't touch my character. You can't touch my anointing. Somebody shout in here. You can't touch this. Woo. But you gotta be you gotta be, be, be careful messing around with them old ladies because they'll lie on you. Yes, they will. Uh huh. Uh, Potiphar's wife lied on little Joseph, and he got put in prison. But while he was in prison, he still had the ability and the integrity to lead uh, all of the inmates and ended up becoming the, not just the, 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 the prison warden's agent, but then got out and became second in the kingdom. Uh, here's my last point and I'm gone. There is a promotion in motion if you can get through the commotion. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see you may be down, uh, but you're not out. Folk may overlook you, uh -huh. uh, but God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Folk may talk about you, but you got to get that Job spirit. Though they slay me, yet will I trust you. Uh, yeah, you may be going through your valley, but since God is with you, I'm just coming to tell you, uh, if you're going through, that means you're coming out. Uh, uh, because of his gifts, because of his integrity, and because of his persistence, by the age of 30, he is the highest official in the land. Uh, and why did Joseph have to endure all of this? Because uh, when there was famine in his daddy's house, they could find food yeah, at Joseph's house. Or when there was hunger at his daddy's house, there was good and plenty at his house. It may not have been in his control, but one thing that Joseph could say, when his brothers needed some help, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I know that Harold had some struggles in his life. I know that he had some sickness in his life. It was all out of his control. But I found out that if you just hold on a little while longer, God will see you through. He may be gone today, but that's all right. Because I heard to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And I know you are going to be crying and weeping for a while. It's going to hurt. But I just came to let you know weeping may endure for a night. But joy, I wish I had a church in here. Joy, joy goes in the morning. I know uh, you may be sad, uh, you may be bewildered, you may be confused, uh, you may be uh, feeling down in the dumps uh, with the blues, uh, but I just came to let you know uh, some glad morning when this life is over, you're going to get two wings to bear your face, two wings to bear your feet. Uh, Two wings up to fly, 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 fly. Uh. And no matter what, this was not in his control. This was in God's hands. He couldn't control this. If he could, he'd still be here. But instead, he did like Jesus did. Into thy hands, I commit my spirit unto you. But I just came to encourage you. On Sunday morning, <laughs> early Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands. And since Jesus got up, 
he gonna get up. With all, with all, y'all not talking back to me. All power.